This is Twit. Now, I know organizations are always wondering what the new normal will look like, especially around cybersecurity. Curtis, can you take us through it? Well, I think I can. Uh, fortunately, this is a story that I wrote that went up today and looked at a, a really big question. You know, from the way that restaurants operate to the way that sports are played, we've been hearing in the first half of 2020 a lot about a new normal. Is there going to be a new normal for business, for for restaurants, for the way we do things coming out of the coronavirus pandemic? Well, the thing that I wanted to know was, is there going to be a new normal in cybersecurity? So I talked to a number of experts and, and got a number of different opinions, but they all kind of converged on, on a few points. Bryson Bort, who's the founder of Scythe and Grimm and co-founder of the ICS Village, very smart guy uh, who I've talked to a number of times, said, I think it's worth pointing out that there's only two ways security changes a fundamental change in the business environment because security is there for business or if the threat changes. Now, he says that he doesn't see the threat really changing, but what has changed dramatically is the way business is done. So he does see a new normal as something that is essentially required going forward as cybersecurity responds to the changes in the business environment. Now, Kirsten Todd, who's managing director of the Cyber Readiness Institute at the University of Pittsburgh, said that when we deal with the new normal, no company that she has talked with has plans to bring the full workforce back in 2020, if ever. And she sees that as being critical because it's unlikely that even when some critical functions flow back into the centralized offices, it's unlikely that every employee who worked in an office in 2019 will be back in that office in 2021. And so what she sees is a hybrid workforce, small number of critical employees in the office, large numbers of employees still working from home. How do we secure that hybrid workforce? Well, a new normal will combine the remote workforce with the secure workspace and create a unified cyber infrastructure that's secure across the entire hybrid environment. Now, of course, that unified cyber infrastructure, if it's going to be effective, it's got to satisfy a number of needs. One of those is balancing the user experience with security. And there are a lot of people that I talked to who said they feel that we've gone too far in the direction of easy user interface, that it's time to, to pull back a little bit, that it's okay to inject a bit of friction into the process if the result is much greater security. And the thing that one expert said is the new normal is that organizations can no longer have a standard definition and expectation that a single workplace or type of workplace, say the traditional office, is where application access happens. Now, it's important to note that any time you have device access and application sitting on the same device, you have a, a critical point at which vulnerabilities can exist. And this new normal means that organizations are going to have to rethink their strategies for access control and identity assurance. You know, in the digital world, we focus more on the trusted devices and IP addresses than validating the human being behind the screen. And a new normal, according to many, should be built more around the granularity of our human nature instead of binary questions like whether that particular device has been seen before or not. That means behavior as an authentication factor. I've talked to a number of people who say that 
behavior-based authentication is one of the keys to moving forward. You know, thinking about when and where someone is logging in, uh, what they do when they first get there, how they type a password, by which I mean the speed and the rhythm of the characters they type in. All of these are distinctive and all can be used. And all are things that people that I spoke with say are going to have to be used. Another thing is the IoT. You know, people are working from their homes and they have all these smart home devices, all of these entertainment and home control devices out there. What's the security of those? Well, in too many cases, it's not very high. And that's why a number of the experts said that we really do have to get back to including security as a necessary feature for even consumer-based IoT devices, allowing people to change passwords and change admin names, making sure that those devices not only can't be taken over as a member of a botnet, but cannot be used as a pivot point to allow an attacker to get in, get into the home network, and from there into the enterprise network. And finally, there's the notion of security. You know, people are pretty clear about minimal expectations for privacy when they are in the office. But most people have a much different expectation of privacy when they're in when they are in their own homes, even if they're using company supplied hardware to do their work. Now, Lou, I, I want to turn to you. I know that you have been thrust into the position of working from home. Do you see this as something that's going to lead to a new normal or do you see everything back to being its 2019 self in another, say, six to eight months? Oh, absolutely. A new normal for sure. Um, we, we already see the increased security measures with organizations, the increased uh, protocols that we have to follow. Um, obviously, we're, we're, a lot of us are using our own personal devices to access security, res, uh, secure, I'm sorry, secured resources. Uh, and so those security measures need to be very strong to ensure that we're not leaking data, leaking source, that kind of thing. And I know a lot of organizations are pushing that norm uh, to ensure that, you know, obviously people who they don't want to go and finance everyone's own personal devices as well. And so they're, they're increasing their service layers and their layers within their security system. So I definitely see the new norm staying put for a long time. Um, and I'm actually hoping that that's the case, uh, with at least with security and, and taking measures there, uh, only because I think it's important for organizations to, to focus on that, continue to focus on that. And, and uh, yeah, so I, I definitely think it's definitely the new norm and it'll continue for sure. Well, you know, the new normal as described there is something that I've been working within for a very long time. And, and I do hope that it becomes more accepted by more organizations if for nothing else but selfish reasons. Brian, I've got a question for you and it, it's on this, this IOT piece of the puzzle. You know, people said that they think it's important that you be able to change the password and even the, the admin account name with IOT devices. Do, do you think that that is the, the only level of change we need to see on IOT if it's going to be part of the new normal? Well, it's certainly a really, really good start. Um, what I'd, I'd like to share an um, informal conversation I had at the last Wispapalooza when I was talking to various equipment vendors. You know, as everybody's hearing, I'm actually looking at building a WIS in Honolulu along with my business partner. One of the things that really and truly changed my mind about what WISPs are doing versus, say, the big boys like Cox or Time Warner or whoever, um, Spectrum, sorry, is that there seems to be a really, really big mix and choices available for endpoint equipment. And one of the things that actually came up during a presentation was a home router um, that could be managed in bulk. And the cool thing was they had standard profiles they called work at home. And basically it was an automated just check it off and it sets it up 
a whole bunch of VLANs and a separate Wi-Fi and all that so that the IoT gear can be on one network, the kids can be on another, dad or mom working from home can be on a third. I think that should be the new normal. The whole idea of working from home and ignoring the home network security is all part and parcel with the whole conversation about IoT. If the IoT vendors aren't going to pay attention and aren't going to put the effort into securing it, then we had darn well better cordon them off. You know, we still want the functionality, but let's put them on a completely separate network. So if someone does pivot through it, it reduces the attack surface. I think that is going to be my watch, my watch phrase for the new normal. Reduce the attack surface and then start doing your work. 